Pro Evo, ISS, Winning Eleven, eFootball. Yes, whichever name you affectionately refer to this series by is a result of a franchise that has defined generations, hooked countless football gamers around the globe, gave us unforgettable memories huddled around tiny televisions with our friends in bedrooms, broke many expensive controllers in sheer frustration, personified passion, rewarded us for our patience and creativity, faithfully recreated the ecstasy and agony of football with indescribable accuracy in polygonal form. FIFA may have been the accessible commercial messiah complete with licenses, had the pop culture soundtrack in the vacuum, may have sold more copies, but Pez was winning the fans hearts on the street. Pro Evolution Soccer was the pinnacle of football recreation. Now the franchise is a polished commercial success which shares just as much bipolar affection with football gamers as FIFA and as many defections back and forth between both camps from fans as Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Louis Figo. But the series wasn't always a success story. It underwent many identity changes, players' identities needed changing, usually by us, the fans, and had its share of culture shocks and technical blunders, each time forcing Konami to work harder on each occasion to win the fans' faith back as well as create new ones. We take a look at the series' humble beginnings, the evolution of the iconic franchise, and the direction the series has taken in present day, and even what the future holds for Pro Evolution Soccer. This is the history of Pets. Konami Hyper Soccer released for the NES in 1992, can be argued laid the foundations for the ISS series which would soon debut on the SNES. Hypersock was part of Konami's Hypersports series which included Hyperolympic, Hypersports and Hyperathletes. Now as the NES controller only had two buttons for the time, the game was extremely basic and simple to play, one button for passing, shooting and tackling, while the other was reserved for lobs and headers while defending. A football game with two button controls. Imagine that. Due to the limitations in the colour palette on the NES, teams' traditional kits were largely confined to improvised colours and simply differentiating opposing teams somehow rather than accuracy or authenticity. There was never going to be a satisfying realism, of course. Konami would find that voice in due time. While games like Madden would set the bar for simulation and accurate tactics and strategy, Sports games during this period was more about fun visuals and exaggerated effects. Football games in 1992, having no frame of reference for sports games like we do in 2021 of course, are grateful to even have football games to play that had sprites actually resembling human beings. It was of course a simpler time, with little to no pressure or expectation on quality or immersive realism, but it was a foot in the door of the footballing world for Konami and Vassal Hyper Soccer counts for the most. International Superstar Soccer, or ISS, is credited for being one of the most innovative football games on the SNES and introduced many of the series staples and traditions that even carry over to present day, such as improvised player names, form icons, challenge training and fictional versions of real tournaments. Konami would lay the foundations for a series long tradition of flirting with the iconic likenesses of star players and having a little fun with getting creative with their names as a loophole to not license them. It was an open secret which Konami themselves finally acknowledged on their own official Twitter accounts in recent years. The names of the fictional counterparts we all long suspected were given aliases, such as Galfano actually being Roberto Baggio in his divine ponytail. Redondo is of course Magic Midget Maradona. Costa is balding Bulgarian hero Jordan Lechkov. USA's metalhead mascot Alexi Lalas is recreated as Ewing. And of course many more such as Marilio is the unmistakable Valderrama. And Gomez is World Cup winning legend Romario. Various game modes, which would go on to be the staples of ISS and even PES, originated right here on the SNES. They include the International Cup, 
The first tease of Konami taking creative license with real world competitions as they do play in Ames. The early seeds of Konami's counterfeit charm planted here. Unfortunately though, only 26 national teams can participate, which even though the game is called International Superstar Soccer in reference to its exclusively international roster, isn't quite international enough for an accurate World Cup. But hey, baby steps. World Series was your version of the league mode to subvert the knockout theme of the International Cup. Training is introduced for the first time, including an early version of Challenge Training. A series of challenges in different fundamentals such as dribbling, passing, shooting and defending under an established time limit. And of course a cult favourite was the scenario mode in which players are thrust in the middle of a game with specific conditions which they must overcome such as overturning a losing scoreline with minimal time or even players remaining. Some scenarios were fictional while others were based on memorable games from famous tournament matches of its time. Just one year later, ISS Deluxe was released on the SNES, as well as the Mega Drive and eventually the Sony PlayStation. The frame rate and animations much improved over its predecessor, and on-field atmospheres such as crowd noise, weather effects and pitch textures created a sense of immersion and diversity throughout games. Player sprites had more character and detail, indicating Konami's early eye for aesthetic over-realism. Commentary was added, and while it was brief and the phrases were short, it was again another little detail that gave matches an extra touch of life. This was expanded on in the PlayStation version of Deluxe due to the extra CD1 space, which allowed for more cynical lines such as It's nil nil, this game is sending the fans to sleep, we need goals! <coughs> Excuse me. Fire the tin! This action is so intense, the ball seems glued to the goal mouth. Of course, the announcing would become a bit of an ironic recurring joke in later games, bad commentary again an unintentional part of the series charm. The 3D era of Pro Evolution Soccer's history begins on the Sony PlayStation, with Goldstorm or World Soccer Winning Eleven, depending on which part of the world you're from. The game modes actually regress from his SNES predecessor which leaves us with Exhibition and Hyper Cup mode, a tournament of which his name is an obvious node to the series roots on the NES. The game's limitations are understandable though, it's 1996 and 3D gaming was a very new concept. It's fair to say Goldstorm even serves his purposes of a three dimensional footballing prototype, a proof of concept if you like for what's to come later on. Contrary to its previous games in the series, there are no player stats, there are even no player faces. Interestingly though, many national kits are accurate and even feature their association's official logos, a theme which would continue throughout the PlayStation series. International Superstar Soccer Pro is the first of its namesake on the PlayStation platform. Although it retains the Gold Storm name in North America and Winning Eleven in Japan, of which the latter's branding would ultimately remain. ISS Pro, or Gold Storm 97, was released in, you guessed it, 1997. Releasing just one year after the very humble Gold Storm, 97 is already a very clear evolution over its older brother in terms of gameplay prowess. The animations and visuals clearly receiving the most attention as well as visually adopting the series' recognisable art direction early on. International Superstar Soccer Pro includes 32 international teams and for the first time, authentic home, away and goalkeeper kits featuring the manufacturer's logos and national emblems. Each lineup consisting of the usual suspects of the 16 fictional players established on the SNES. The on-field gameplay is the genesis of Konami's philosophy of realism and fun. The most fluid animation seen in a 3D football game to date, as well as tight intuitive responsive controls. It may seem taken for granted now, but in the early years of 3D gaming, the challenge was in incorporating fundamentals of football in the coding. 
In the ISS Pro, the through pass mechanic is implemented for the first time, which in of itself creates new ways of scoring, other than running and shooting or crossing and hoping. The one-two pass is also introduced for the first time, although not quite as polished as later on, mostly because it's an automatic mechanic, it's still a welcome playmaking addition. Score lines in football games around this time are usually high because of inconsequential gameplay. However, in ISS Pro, the philosophy is on realism, and the goals per games rarely exceed 5 at the most, but are usually grounded. The game introduced the concept of earning your goals, which leads to the urge of punching the air when you do score, the so-called PES magic. However, the sound was one area that didn't advance as much as its gameplay though. The dribbling sounds like someone stamping on grapes at a vineyard. Germany aren't afraid to take on defender. Lovely twist and turn. And the commentary unintentionally comedic. Norway will have their work cut out. Norway have chosen to play down. This could be done. Off his head. That wasn't even in the right. Through pass. A blinding save. Although in fairness, still nowhere near as bad or fragmented as WWF Smackdown just bring it. Here's Chris Benoit. Shut up. International Superstar Soccer 64 releases in 1997 alongside ISS Pro. It's essentially the Nintendo 64 version of the aforementioned game. One of the saving graces of ISS 64 is that it's superior in performance to its rival FIFA 64. As with ISS Pro, Konami's priority is smooth and responsive gameplay, which offered notably less lag than its FIFA counterparts, apart from in crowded goal celebrations. Another area of which ISS 64 thrives over the PlayStation version is its use of the controller's analog stick with context sensitive input. Pushing the controller slightly results in slower movement, while full engagement yields a full jog, while of course holding C enables a sprint. The PlayStation's DualShock controller released in the same year, but the PlayStation software that was developed prior or developed without controller input in mind wouldn't implement it or benefit from its function, something which the N64 titles of ISS would flourish from. A fluidity and dribbling which PlayStation owners would have to wait years to experience to its full potential. The proverbial ball continues to roll in ISS's evolution, as ISS 98 released shortly after the memorable 1998 World Cup. It's no surprise that this game's influence would come from the frenzy of that tournament. The game now features 52 teams, including those which qualified for the World Cup Finals. However, despite being licensed, their kits weren't up to date as of the World Cup of 1998. The number of players in each team has been upgraded to 20, and now formations can be changed during a match in Japan, winning 11-3, as ISS 98 was known as, is the first instance of Konami releasing various builds of the same game in the same time frame. Beginning with winning 11-3 in late 1997, followed by their own World Cup cash-in, winning 11-3, World Cup France 98, and finally, winning 11-3, final version. Released in late 1998, the major changes and improvements have been focused on graphical and statistical updates rather than the engine itself. Notable changes include those such as a revised art direction, less vivid visuals and more emphasis on realism, official kits worn at the World Cup of 1998, modernised square goal nets, a wonderfully recreated Stade de France, the venue of the 1998 World Cup final, more replays after significant moments, and finally an improved 1-2 pass method is added, allowing the first player to pass and run without the second player having to return the ball immediately, negating the automotive restrictiveness of the original ISS Pro. The number 2000 struck enough fear and anxiety into anybody working in the software industry in 1999, 
but it didn't intimidate Konami enough not to name their newest N64 game after the fake Rapture. Speaking of fake, ISS 2000 would be one of the first games to feature many player names in an official capacity, as well as the largest roster to date in the series with exactly 100 teams in total. In the North American and European versions, a high resolution mode by 1999 standards was implemented in the game, although its performance was so unplayable it's about as tolerable as watching elderly Cunnilingus. In the Japanese version, J League teams replace the international sides and they even go full throttle and add several exclusive Japanese stadiums in place of the usual Euro Continental ones. For the first and only time, an RPG career style mode modestly named Success Mode was featured so long as he didn't own the North American cartridge. Could this be the first instance of Covert Konami, discreetly removing popular features with little to no explanation? In Success Mode, your aim is to create a player from scratch, try to break into the starting 11, build a reputation for yourself and become a walking marketing machine, while juggling social skills with soccer ones. Carefully choosing the type of dialogue that makes friends and influences people. An early Japanese role playing influence in the series that wouldn't return until they become a legend mode much later on. Over the summer of 1999, the greatest football game of the 20th century was released. The pinnacle of PlayStation football. ISS Pro Evolution, the pilot of the series permanent branding for the next 20 years with Premiere here. ISS Pro Evolution is rightly remembered for being the game that truly defined the essence of footballing simulation and established that realistic football can be done, least of all in what we now know as primitive hardware. The ambition was there with ISS Pro, its on pitch structure was strengthened in 98 but Pro Evolution was the truly impactful revision the series was waiting for all along come the fifth generation of consoles. The contextual fundamentals of football are polished here such as the improvement of the 1-2 pass from ISS Pro 98. Dribbling receives more attention as flair is represented respectfully for the first time as well as the debut of the shot feint mechanic, a welcome addition giving strikers an additional edge in their duels with goalkeepers. A staple of PES is its Master League mode, which also makes its debut in its earliest incarnation. In this case, the 16 best teams in Europe compete in somewhat of a Super League, a long time fantasy of UEFA for many years, but Konami had the bragging rights of actually fulfilling it. It's in this manner club teams officially appear for the first time in the series, although exclusive to this mode. Yet whatever team you choose to campaign as, your superstars are swapped out for the first class of the Master League defaults. The idea of which is to persevere with your minnows while you transfer in better players over time to strengthen your squad until you have your own dream team. Due to there being only one sole division, there is no promotion or relegation, just an endless loop of league purgatory. However, much like on-field gameplay, the Master League would be a mode that would receive just as many refinements in the coming year. The creator's favourite, Edit Mode, receives an upgrade. Now renaming player names is made slightly easier due to the fake identities being far more obvious to classify, mostly due to them being correct when pronounced. The gateway for a boot fetish is opened here too. For the first time, we may change the colour of players' footwear. Before being blessed by the sheer ease of sharing moments via social media and YouTube, you could get away with bragging about your wonder volley from 50 yards that conveniently nobody was around to see. Unfortunately for the Jays of the in-betweeners... Championship manager, complete it mate. You can't complete it. Yeah, I know, but... There was no excuse not to back up your claim as the innovation of saving your goals debuts in ISS Pro Evolution. Simply saving your iconic strikes to a memory card, taking them to a friend's house and showing it off on a different PS1 other than your own was truly revolutionary in 1999. The final mainline ISS game on the PlayStation is released in March 2001. With the foundations laid with its revolutionary predecessor and with the industry defining next generation console on the horizon, 
ISS Pro Evolution 2 doesn't reinvent the football shaped wheel drastically but rather refines it with further quality of life improvements, some of which are even memoed in the game's main menu. Master League 2.0 is extended, now you begin your journey in the second division and at least you have a target, promotion to the first. The mode welcomes extra teams such as Leeds, West Ham and River Plate. The now iconic Master League Originals debut. Our lifelong fondness of our underdogs such as Ivanov, Jimenez, Miranda and Costello all began here on its PS1 swan song. The Japanese version actually released six months earlier, showcasing the under 23 national teams set against the backdrop of the 2000 Sydney Olympics. The second time Konami would honour a real life event with their native version since World Cup 98. One month later, North America would get their own exclusive authentic edition, showcasing the now four year old MLS. 2001 was the end of an era, but also the beginning of an even bigger one. In one console generation we've gone from this to this. Next time on History of Pez, we take a look at how we go from this to this. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed part 1 of the history of Pez. Who has been playing from the very beginning and do you have a favourite from the period depicted in this video? Let me know below, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the PS2.